Okay, so since we're learning the sugi of Talmud Torah, and also this week's parsha is the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, the mitzvah of Shinanta, the um, the I wanted to talk a little bit about the Indian of Hasmada, because you see already from the Torah itself, and Baruch Hashem, a lot of people right now that. Uh, it's Bein Azman and you guys are sitting in the base of Medrash, so uh, really, Agroisi Yashikoye, Chazak Baruch, it shows that uh, your love for learning, because um, really already from the, from the Chazal, from the, from the Pasuk, it's, it, the, the Pasuk itself is telling you the essence of Talmud Torah is something that has to be done on a constant basis. Because it says, Vishinantam Levanecha, right? That's how we learn. The Rambam learns that it's a mitzvah to learn. So it says, Vishinantam Levanecha. When should you learn? Vishiftacha. When you sit, when you get up, when you go, when you come, when you. Right? At all opportunities. So it happens to be that um, the fir- there's 48 Kinyanim to get the Taira. And it's the last Brisa over there in. Um, the last parak of Pirkei Avos, the first of the forty-eight Kinyanim is Betalmud. So the Arizal, there's a fascinating. If you if you want a very good pirush on Pirkei Avos, it's a wonderful, wonderful pirush. It was a, is written by um, the Mechaber of the Sefer is the Midrash Shmuel. He was a Talmud of the Arizal. Rav Shmuel uh, di Azuda. So he has a fascinating and wonderful pirish, the Medrash Shmuel on Pirkei Avos. So he brings down, he goes to explain what does it mean. Obviously, when we try to, Rav Aaron Cutler has a whole shmuz on this, that Rav Aaron says interesting, he says, just like in Kinyane Bavakama, there are certain Kinyanim like Hagba, Kesef, whatever, without that you can't, have a bailus. So the same thing. Chazal are telling us you need these 48 kinyanim to become, to get a bailus, to be kaine, the Torah. Other things are not going to help you know it. If you don't have these, if, you're, if we're missing, that's why in Lakewood when Rav Aaron had established um, BMGD, they had a very interesting chabura, the Bnei Aliyah. Every week, there was a group there that would work on one of the 48 kinyanim because it's basically, there's 52 weeks in a year and then 48 is the, you know, the Bali Musar say that the 48 days of, uh, 49 days of the Oimer, each day you should work on a Kenyan because it's going to Kabbalah Satira. And then uh, Rabbi Salantar, I believe, said that the 49th day you chazer all 48. Rabbi Matasio actually has a very, very nice safer on these 48 Kenyanim. But when the Medrash Shmuel goes to explain the min- the, this, what it means, the first Kenyan of Torah, which is Talmud, learning, he says, Biyoto lo metami leolam. He says, you're always constantly learning. Who is a true chacham, somebody that learns from any, everybody. This reminds me of Rav Avadi. Rav Avadi, when any, when any time somebody was talking too much or he, was, he felt that his time was wasted, he would tell people, I don't want to be Amaretz. Let me go back to the base Medrash and learn. So that's what the Medrash says, that the, 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 the pillar, right? When you get the 48 Kenyanim, you're building this beautiful palace and tower of Torah, right? That it causes you to become that true Talmud Chacham. The Grozal says in his Pirishan, Mishle, he says, Rabbis Banus Asuchayil, the At Alis Al Kunal. You know that Al the Medrash and Kabbalah, the Eshes Chah is really talking about a Talmud Chacham. So it says, Rabbis Banus Asuchayil. Chayil is the Gematria, what? 48. But it's interesting, one of the 48 min- Kenyanim is not to learn Torah Lishma. Right? So the Grazel is Va'at. So a lot of people could get to the 48 Kenyanim. But still, they're not learning Torah Lishma. Va'at, the Grazel says, you that learn Torah Lishma, Alit Al Kulana. You get the highest Madrega. So he says that one always has to feel, he has to also be, always be thirsty and feel that he's never learned enough, right? The choyshik, and the main thing is to have the haravna, the the desire 
to learn more and more. So then the Medrash Shmuel says, Ze ya, ya ma'alat ha-Torah. Such a person that always feels that he doesn't know enough and he, he needs to learn more and more, this person is going to get to the what? The Milas HaTorah. He's always thirsty, like he's always thirsty, like a person that's thirsty for what? Water. So he's never mistabek mumud. Actually, the Rabbeinu Yonah, if you look on that Mishnah in Pirkei Avos, the beginning, the first Mishnah Perik Dalit, the Rabbeinu Yonah says a beautiful thing. He says in Spain, the Gedolim used to say a beautiful thing. He says, on the, he says this on the Mishnah of Ezehu Chacham Haloimit Mikolada. He says that um, in Spain they used to say. If you know everything, but you don't love to learn, you're not a Chacham. But if you don't know anything, right? But you have Ahava Satayra, you love to learn, then already you could be called what? A Chacham. That's the whole Pshat that he says, Eizehu Chacham, Aloydimim Koladam. You love learning so much that it doesn't matter. A little kid, like you see in Chazal, that when the, they would pass a, 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 a Tashbar, they would, they would uh, pass a Yeshiva Katana, the Chacham would say, Pasukli Pesukha, tell me, what you learned today. So that's, Chazal bring out this idea that a person has to love Taira so much and the Rambam really says over there that a person should have such integrity that in, in his learning, then it doesn't matter. Even if you're Chavrusa, even if you're like a Rosh Hashira, you're 80 years old and then you're learning with your grandson and your grandson says, he's 15 years old, he says the right Pshat, you're Mechabal the MS, right? From anybody, because that's a person, he loves learning, doesn't matter. From, from somebody that's 80 years younger than him, 70 years younger than him, anybody. So I wanted to give you guys a little boost. Um, there's a wonderful other sefer on Pirkei Avos. It's like the... Um, he did a kind of similar job than the, the Lekach Tov. It's called Michel Ha'avot. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a wonderful sefer. So he brings down a Meridika Maisa from the Chazonish. He says the Chazonish had a close family member, and it was Ben Azmanim in Bnei Brak. And you know, Bnei Brak, if you've ever been in, in that, it's a suburb of Tel Aviv, it's like Florida, it's very humid. So the Chazar Nish's family member, that he was very down, he was like depressed. He said, you know, I don't have anything to do, I'm bored, I want to learn. The, um, you know, philosophically speaking, I do want to learn, but I just don't have the, it's too hard to do. So the Chazar Nish said, he came to the Chazanish to get some chizuk. So the Chazanish said, let me tell you, Maisa, this will give you a lot of chizuk. He said that in the end of the days of the Chafetz Chaim, it's the Dibuk story. He said that uh, there was a Dibuk in one of the cities in Europe. A, um, a foreign neshama had entered the neshama of a little girl. In English they call it exorcism or something like that. And um, the Chafetz Chaim was too old. This was right... At the end of his life, he sent his three Talmidim. He said, uh, he sent the Panovich Rav, Rav Shlomo Kahanamin, I think Rav Ruven Katz, which ended up becoming the Rosh Hashiva Petach Tikva, and I think, and Rabbi Khanan. He sent three of his Talmidim that they should go tell this Dibuk, this uh, foreign um, Neshama that had hijacked this little girl's body, that he should get out. So they come to the Neshama and then they tell the Dibuk that the Chavetz Chaim was geyser on you, right? He decrees that you leave the body. So once they said Rabbi Yisrael Meir HaKohen, he, um, the Neshama says, fine. So it's interesting. There's a whole story there that they asked him a lot of secrets of what's going on in Shamayim. Some say that it had predicted the Holocaust was going to happen. And one of the questions they asked is, why immediately when we said the name of the Chafetz Chaim, you said that you don't want to mess with him. You're going to, right away, you're going to leave the body. So he said, because in the Chafetz Chaim, the Chafetz Chaim, they're very, ma very much machsh of him, because he's an unbelievable, unfathomable masmid, right? He's always learning. So and it's funny, you know, the, the Nashama left and the girl was okay and everything happened. So Chazanish said to his um, relative, he said, this is a Meridika, you, you mamish get mispal from this Maisa. And why is that? Because the Chazanish says, if you would have asked me in Shamayim why their Machshib the Chafetz Chaim is why, there was a mitzvah of Lashon Hara and Rechilus that was like a Mace mitzvah and the Chafetz Chaim 
devoted his whole life to the right to say for what? Chafetz Chaim. But when they asked the Dibuk, why are they machshev the Chafetz Chaim in the Olam Amas? What did he say? He said it's because of his hasmada, because his diligence in learning. So the Chavetz, the Chazanish told his younger, the Yeshiva Bachar that had come to him for Chizik, he said, you see from here that as wonderful and Chavetz Chaim brought to the conscience of Klal Yisrael that they should be careful in Shmir Salashoin. But he said, ultimately speaking, you see that in the Olam Ha'emes there's nothing greater than the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. And somebody that is always engrossed and, har- and holding in his learning and always a masmid, you see in Shamaim that's the most chashiv thing. That's why when they asked the Dibuk, why when we said the name of Rav Yisrael Meir Akayin, you said right away you're going to leave, you're not going to argue with us. He answered that because of the Chavetz Chaim was... Um, always learning. And that's why he had the great, great stature in Shamayim, in Palmalia, Shalmala, that he did, they were thinking. So Chazanish said that this should give you chizuk, that you should know. There's no higher madrega than, than the, the, the madrega of Hasmada. So it's an interesting story. I was reading a biography of the Chafetz Chaim. It says actually uh, the Panovich Arov, which was a Talmud of the Chafetz Chaim, once came to his house to be Mishamishim and see his Rebbe. He saw the Chafetz Chaim didn't have a lot of Sfarim in his house. He didn't have like my Rosh Hashiva Rav Rudiman, my parents used to stay, his son Rav Weinberg, his son in law became the Rosh Hashiva Neri, so he had like tens of thousands of Sfarim. So Rav Shlomo Kahneman was shocked, like he didn't even see like a lot of Rishonim. It was like a basic, I mean, he had Shas, I was Shulchan Aruf, of course, but a lot of the. So the, the, he asked the Chafetz Chaim that, you know, relative to somebody that's the Rashka Bahag and the, the God of Lador, relatively speaking, he was a little bit disappointed. He didn't see that many Swarm in the house of the Chafetz Chaim. Chafetz Chaim says, you should know, when I write the Mishnah Bura, I write all my Swarm, I use the Swarm of my Beis Madrish, my Yeshiva, the Radin Yeshiva, and he says, you, he, sa- he, told, he told the Panovich Rav, the reason why that is, is because that he, he believes that by the time he goes to the Sfarim store and he goes to, to buy the Sfarim, it's going to cost Bittul Torah. So, Ad Kedei Kach, that he, he, the Chavetz Chaim told the Panovich Rav, the reason why he didn't go searching for, for, for Sfarim was that it was, it was something that would, in his opinion, he, you know, there was enough Sfarim in the yeshiva, and to go buy Sfarim already, he considered that Bittul Torah. So, the, um, Blinetta, when I give you the Chabura on this mitzvah of Lil Torah of Elisa Isha, there's an interesting Kaibetz Shurim on this whole idea of, of learning. Rabbi Elchanan says a very interesting thing. We know there's a Pasuk, we say, Ki em chayenu yameinu, right? The Torah is our life. So, there's a very interesting thing that really, it's brought down in the Gemara and Chagiga, Gemara and Ma'ikatan, it's a halacha psuka that if you have an opportunity to do a mitzvah to learn Torah, what do you do? So it depends. If the mitzvah is possible to be done through other people, now let's say your father needs a ride to the doctor, right? If nobody else is there to take him, you have to take him, right? Mitzvah, you have to do it. But, if, if, um, there's other people that could do it, you shouldn't close, you shouldn't leave the base medrash, you should be engrossed in your learning, and, and, and do it. So, Rabbi Hanan explains over there, basically, that, the surah of Talmud Torah is Azoi. When Hashem told Yoshua, Lo yamush sefer haTorah zemi picha vigita bo yomam v'layla. Right? Hashem tells Yeshua that if you want to have atzlocha, the um, you shouldn't ever abandon your learning and you should be engrossed in it day and night. So Rabbi Chanan says, "I've married the Kazakh over there." He says that ultimately speaking, the um, there is always a heter to go to work or Kiv Yachol, to go to the back, whatever. On one hand, one has to live a normal life. So, it's not considered Bittul Taira 
to go do function as a normal human being. Even the Chazor Nish writes in one of his letters that it's okay to exercise or have fun sometimes, you know, because you need that to, to be a normal human being to, to, to function. But the default setting of a, of a Jew should be as such is that he's always learning Taira, right? You have a heter to go to work, you have a heter to make money, to take up for your wife, have kids, but if you don't have that heter, where should you be? You should, you should be sitting, and that's really what the, in the base Medrash, in the Med Midrash and learning Torah, that's what David said. Achat shalti met Hashem, oto avake shifti v'vez Hashem kol yemei chayai. David said, this is my one thing that I want from Hashem, that I should sit and be able to be always to learn. So I'll tell you, the um, interesting story from Rosh Hashiva Zatzal Rav Ruderman, and then uh, we'll f- we'll finish with that. It says that um, you know the altar from Kelm in the Kelm Yeshiva. He had a minag that they would have a seder just for five minutes because he wanted to show the Bachrim that. Um, how important is if you see if you save even one minute of time, right? A lot of times you're in line, you have to do stuff. Every minute counts. There was actually Rav Bengis. One time he was one of the Gedolim of Yerushalayim, Rav Reuven Bengis. He says one time he gave a siyum ashas, and then a few weeks later he gave another siyum ashas. So all the Gedolim of Yerushalayim, his Talmidim, that were there by Rav Bengis, they said that. They said, Rebbe. How could you finish us in two weeks? So he said, this one, this first hymn that I gave, I was learning Bi'iyun, and I was, it was a Seder that I had for many years. But he says the second hymn that I just gave a few weeks after the first one was, I used to have a Seder since I was a young man. Every time I was in line or a few minutes, I would learn a line or two. So he said, after all these years, the, the one minute here, one minute there, it was like a different track. I was able to finish Shas, you know? So he was telling his Talmidim that, you know, the, the one minute here, one minute there, if you, like Rabengus was showing his Talmidim that, you know, you could literally finish the entire Shas, or Shmuel actually, I know. Um, Shlita, he finished Shas a few times during Chazarsa uh, Shas. But there's an interesting story with Rabbi Schwartz. This, this goes back to the 1950s. Rav Ruderman had a... Had a uh, Small hold, you can do the line there. Uh, that's what he did. That's what I heard. It's... Uh, it's... Um, I guess you have to be careful to make the amens. It's, it's actually... I'll pick up, no, you should know. I'll pick up all the, the Ben Ishchai holds that the Chazar has a higher madrega. And it's it's more important to say the amens. But I'm sure he was saying the amens. But um, oh, they say even like the Shabura box like you shouldn't even like unwrap and wrap your tefillin. I hear. I hear. Even if you if you go, the Benishka even says a stark relation. He says it's a higher madriga than when you daven yourself. That's why the amens. But be that as it may, we're trying to bring out another point here, <laughs> and that is. So it says we'll finish with this ma'isa with Rav Ruderman. It's a very very interesting ma'isa. He says that. Um, one time there was a bachar in yeshiva, he ended up becoming a rabbi in Virginia, Rabbi <coughs> Schwartz. As a bachar, young man, he had just gotten his license, and he was a Baltimorean. So one day he was being mishamish to Rosh Hashiva, Rosh Hashiva said, I have an appointment for my eyes in downtown, can you give me a ride? He said, yeah, Rosh Hashiva, I actually just got my license, and my father lets me drive the car. He comes and he picks up the Rosh Hashiva, and he drops him off in his thing. So Rosh Hashiva, Zatzal told him, Rav Ruderman, said that, you know, this appointment is going to take me two hours at least. So the, the Bachar had just gotten his license. He said, wow, I could go take a tour of downtown Baltimore, the harbor, this, that. He was, you know, excited. So, you know, he had just gotten his license. Unfortunately, he got lost because he had done a little tour. And he had come like 20 minutes late. At Rosh Hashiva was sitting by, standing by the sidewalk. He was like, you know, So he, he goes and he poly- make Rosh Hashiva wait almost a half an hour sitting, standing on after his appointment. He had gotten lost, you know. Boys will be boys. The, uh, he, Rosh Hashiva didn't answer. 
He was just murmuring. He, he says, Shashiva Mechila, I made you wait a half an hour. I'm sorry, I got lost. I, he came and sat in the seat again. He was just murmuring. So finally, when they, he took him to, to his house, back to the yeshiva, um, he says, he says, the Rosh Hashiva said, don't worry about it at all. So he said, Rosh Hashiva, half an hour, I'm asking you for forgiveness. You, don't, you ignored me. What were you, you were just murmuring. He said, you should know. I, when, you, when, you, when I saw you were late, I started chazering all of Shas Mishnayis. So I gotten already when you had come, I was like somewhere in Moyed. So I figured I'd finish, finish all the Shishay Sidre Mishnah. Shas. That's why I was reviewing it. I said I wanted to finish all Shas Mishnah. It's in my mind. That's why I, I, he says uh, I'm not, I have, He said Chas I have no akpada against you. It just it was a shame. I had, I was already like halfway. You you know I you know it's uh, the the thing brings that that this idea down that um, what's the say for the Beis Yosef wrote the Malach with the Malach. Magid Misharim. So the Beis Yosef bring the Malach says that you should know when you're learning and you learn Mishnayis while one, one one is learning he thinks in learning and he learns on the table. You should know. He says even he says in Shemayim the the Malach told him it's considered you're bringing the one, most lofty and wonderful karbanos to Hashem. So there's actually a very interesting sefer. It's a very wonderful Musa sefer. My cousin is very into it. Uh, he's a big masman. It's called Binyan Eilam. And he writes over there a very interesting thing. He says that he brings from a Chavetz Chaim, I think, one of the Sifrei Chavetz Chaim. The Chavetz Chaim has a whole Sefer about Hasmada and how important learning is. He brings that really one should, since ty- we will, right? It says, Adam la Amal Yulid, right? The Gemara in Sanhedrin daf um, Sadi test that the whole reason we were created what? To learn Torah, to be Amal in Torah. So he brings over there in the beginning of a Sefer a fascinating idea. That he says one should create his lifestyle around that anything, like the Chavetz Chaim, the Chavetz Chaim went so far that he said he didn't know that it was so important for him to even go by Svarim. Different Gedolim had different, you know, personalities regarding that. But he said one should create his, his lifestyle in a way that it maximizes to the second how much he has time to learn. Which means like my Rebbe, I, Reb Tzvi, um, he's Reb Shmuel's uh, Aiden, his, his wife goes shopping for him, for ties and stuff, I heard. He doesn't like, you know, he, for, for, to, to go buy him suits and ties, he, he doesn't go out. So there is such a hasaga, like, we, you know, they say the grozal, <laughs> so it says the uh, this is being recorded though you can't just say it it says the uh, I tell you an interesting thing it says that um, I was once when I was in the in the Neri Saul Kailo you know Rav Avadia, not only knew Shas and Poiskin but he knew like 40, 50,000 Svarim by heart the Chuvis and Kola Tarekula so he says my, uh, my Rosh Chabura, Rabbi Yanki Horowitz, he, he brought out an idea. He said, if you look, I don't know, maybe we should do a, a tshuva and Yabi Aimer with them on Talmud Torah and Asugi and Talmud Torah so they could have the godless. But it says that, he says, you have to appreciate the fact how much Hasmada it needs to go through all these swarm. You, know, you understand? It's not just Shas. It's all the Rishonim. It's all the Chuvis. It's all, even contemporary. He used to, even people that used to put out contemporary swarm used to quote them to be mechabed them, so it's it was just it's like it's like unfathomable. Not literally, literally he was learning. Geon Ozenu Rav Avadia Yosef Zatzal. He was literally somebody that in our day and age he was learning like sixteen hours a day, something like that. He would just be in a dav and go here, give a shir there. But it's an amazing thing that if one make prioritizes it. Hashem should help us that really that's the whole surah of the Talmud Torah that we should be a rangatan day and night and that's the Zohar says that when we are connected to the Torah it's the it's a chayim. it's it's chayim hilam hachazikim but we're, we're, we're in this surreal world where it's a it's a piece of Gan Eden like it says in this week's parasha 
Ba'adonai Eloheichem, Chaim Kulchem Ayom. Those people that are involved in the Torah and Mitzvahs, those people are alive. Like my Rebbe in the mirror used to say, Rabbi Yaakov Moshe Katz, he says, there's a lot of people walking, they're dead, they're like zombies. The few, the, uh, somebody that's not, doesn't have any learning, he's not an Eved Hashem, it could be he has the biggest, he may be like LeBron James, he may have the biggest muscles or, or make the best slam dunks, but he's essentially he's like a walking dead person. Those people that are always orangutan in the learning, always thinking in the sugya, always involved, Davik to Hashem. And Rav Shlomo Zalman Arbach used to say that our Ahavas HaTayra is Avas Hashem, right? Through, through our loving of Torah and always being connected to the Torah, that's what brings us to what? The Madrega of Ahavat Hashem. Hashem should be mezakeh to get there.